Well, I started having uh, first uh, time access to internet in 94 in, uh, in Europe. It was a quite early period. Uh, having these uh, first time connections by pulling in, putting in uh, a cable in the plug, so to dial up. It's the early timing of uh, how the internet was used in that time. Uh, I was participating in a European Commission project that was quite interesting, as we had been in four different countries checking how internet was perceived by SMEs, small and medium enterprise companies and enterprises. It was really amazing to see the difference between the cultures. So I helped understanding for the Italian people, for instance, uh, that the internet was not something magic, it could work. Uh, while in the UK, uh, it was no longer magic, it was something they were really using in the same period of time. Putting that back in my home country in Belgium, um, I started setting up a, uh, a few projects uh, with uh, larger companies. It was the, the first, uh, the web 1.0, and the, um, let's say, the, the bubble that started uh, creating um, uh, web content producers, uh, producing websites. So I have been involved for a few years in that uh, period of time. Uh, recently, I have uh, a more active uh, participation with government and trying to help them in understanding um, how internet works, especially for governments, and how to, for instance, set up a new GTLD uh, for our regions. Well, as uh, I said, I was participating in a, a European Commission project and uh, it was really a surprising period. In, in less than 10 years, the whole internet changed. And by participating in uh, some of the bubble companies, uh, bubble enterprises in uh, the web 1.0, um, I have been revealing that uh, the importance of content is not just uh, graphics and images, but also how you bring your information to your customers being the internet users. And uh, I have been quite helpful in helping setting up um, websites that are uh, accessible for disabled people. It's uh, a part of the world that very often is forgotten. But um, when you look at blind people, it's for them the world where they can participate in the community, while in all other uh, circumstances they are not allowed. So that was a big jump into uh, a step where the disabled people were allowed to participate. And still today it's a, a quite interesting uh, activity in which I'm really happy to be a part of. It depends on where in the world you are. When you cover the globe, uh, internet doesn't look at borders, doesn't look at weather. Uh, it's just going forward and it depends in which region you are. Uh, when I look in Europe and we have this uh, activity uh, going on, uh, which is probably known everywhere, it's the prison discussion. So it's a bit stormy. Uh, for us, uh, but in some other countries it is not at all. When you look at Africa, for instance, it's all new for them, it's all magic, uh, so it's sunny. Uh, it brings them new economies, while for um, governments in uh, almost every country, uh, it starts um, creating a lot of discussions, uh, but also popping up issues that they never have been thinking about. Uh, as, um, for instance, the discussions about the internet doesn't stop at your border, but your legislation stops at the border. How do you act as a government? How do you create new laws? And that's something in which uh, I'm recently, in the last two years, involved in Belgium and in Europe. And it's an, an amazing period. Um, you can go from sun into a storm within a few minutes, uh, just like the weather. Well, I would start with the fears and, and end up with the good, uh, positive things. Uh, the fear is that um, when we see some governments uh, and some organizations uh, like ITU trying to take control on the internet um, by looking at content and how we communicate, well, we have to be afraid of too much control and too much Big Brother situations. So that could damage 
the future of the internet if there is too much control. At the end, we know that everybody is looking at us, but if we are aware of the fact that every citizen, every internet user is aware of the fact that all what you do on the internet is seen, it could bring it down to a limited version of the internet. My hope is that um, with ISOC and with our partners in the internet community, we will be able to turn back that situation and keep it open and keep everybody uh, in a situation where uh, they can access the internet freely without any uh, burdens, without any control of bodies and governments. And um, I see it as the opportunity, and especially for developing countries, um, it's access to knowledge. If we cut that off, well, it is not good. So what I see is that with the, the growth of the internet, uh, knowledge is going to increase and almost everybody, and the youngsters, first of all, they are born with internet. For them, it's natural. So I think that they will protect the future of the internet by saying, hey, it's something we just pull out of the plug. Don't pull it down. So I hope really that the youngsters will keep it alive uh, and follow what we have been doing. Well, one of the most important things to do is to get consensus on all levels. And the first ones are the what we call the I-STARS, uh, being um, ISOC, Internet Society, being ICANN, being ITF, uh, IAB and uh, many others, that they reach consensus on how the Internet will evolve and how to tackle all the difficulties and problems that pop up. I think that's the most important action, that there is consensus and that they continue to talk to each other and not start competing each other in their mission. I think that that's the biggest action that uh, is needed in the future to keep it um, the internet as it is today and let it grow.